Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael and I like data structures. So let's say you have a, a data structure representing a player's inventory. It can be, let's say, inventory ds list create. And let's say you put some stuff in the inventory. Let's, let's give the player a nice sword. Let's give him a bigger sword. Um, what else might you have? Let's give him a pizza because everyone needs to carry a healing item around. Okay, so we now have a inventory containing three items. Uh, let's go to the draw event. And let's draw these on the screen. Nope. Um, actually, yeah. Let's put that in the middle of the screen. How about? just so that we know what we're looking at. And then uh, we can go through the inventory in a loop. And we can draw the contents of the inventory. We'll have them online spaced out by 32. Don't worry about the alignment. Uh, the important part is that we're going to be drawing the contents of the inventory. The reason I'm using strings instead of, for example, a, a reference to an item that contains the information is um, I want to keep things simple, at least for now. So we're going to run the game, and we have an inventory containing a sword, a big sword, and some pizza. That's pretty nice. That works for simple inventories. Uh, let's say that you want to make this a little bit more elaborate. Let's say that instead of adding just a string containing the name of the item, we will be adding... And since this is GML 2.3, I really should be using a lightweight object for this. But that's not going to illustrate the point that I want to make, which is chained accessors. So I'm going to be going with good old DS maps instead. Let's give the sword item a name and a quantity, which is going to be a number, which we'll say is one. OK, so this is, uh, this is what games would often call an item stack. Uh, which is, you have, instead of individual items in an inventory, you have stacks of items which could represent, like, one sword, two hats, ten slices of pizza, whatever. That is, a. Uh, this is, this is admittedly rather specific to the game that you're making, but let's give you, let's give you three big swords. Just so that you can be extra intimidating. Anyway, I will, um, let's see, that is, that is... Second item, and after that, we're going to have an item stack representing pizza. And the quantity for that can be like 50, because you really always want to be pre prepared. So now that, we've, uh, now that we've defined those item stacks, uh, we can add them to the inventory. So. If you're visualizing the inventory structure as um, as a as a nested data structure in your head, it will probably look something like this. Whatever you see on the screen right now, um, that is called a tree. If you were to write this out as JSON, it would look something like that. But more on that later. So we have added the uh, the sword, the big sword, and the pizza item stacks to the inventory, and it's probably worth noting that you don't actually need to put these in each in their own uh, each in their own DS list ads. You are allowed to put any as many things as you want in the DS list add function, and they'll all be added in order. Uh, this is a variadic function, so you can give it as many arguments as you want, at least up to a point. I've never tried to give it more than 16 arguments. A lot of built-in game maker functions just break after 16 arguments, but that's neither here nor there. So now if we run the game, it will, instead of showing the name, it'll just show a number, because these are the indices of the DS maps that we added to the inventory. Up until now, if you wanted to access the information inside of the DS maps uh, representing each inventory, you would have had to have done something like var item stack equals the entry in the list, and then DS map find value item stack uh, name. And let me scroll over to make a little more room, and then. If you want to draw the quantity, you would have to say ds map find value item stack 
quantity. And that's really long, and nobody really likes typing out all that stuff. Uh, but in any case, now we can see sword times 1, big sword times 3, pizza times 50. I hope you're hungry. And then in Game Maker Studio 1, uh, Yo-Yo Games added these things called data structure accessors, meaning that instead of needing to go through the fairly long and annoying function name of DS map find value uh, or DS list find value in the case of lists, you can simply use um, you can simply use uh, square bracket notation, not too unlike you would with an array. And certain data structures, those being uh, maps, lists, grids, and kind of sort of arrays have their, uh, have their own axis or symbol so that you can look up a value inside it. It's not quite as good as having as just having the square bracket operator overloaded like you can in some other programming languages, but I'm not here to complain about that right now. But anyway, that cuts down on a lot of typing. So now if I were to run the game, that would do the exact same thing. This was added in, I want to say, when did GMS1 came out? 2014, I think? 2013, maybe? I don't remember. It was a long time ago. So these are called accessors, and you can use them to, uh, to streamline your data structure usage a little bit. And it's pretty nice. And on the 23rd of April 2020, uh, with the GameMaker 2.3 update beta, we can simplify this a little further. Now, instead of saying, um, instead of having to go through an intermediate value for the entry in the list, the data structure in the list, and then, and then pulling more values out of that, uh, you can instead directly say, the entry in the list followed by more square bracket, more, um, well, followed directly by the accessor, I should say. And you don't have to go through the intermediate variable anymore. Uh, in previous versions of GameMaker, this would crash. Now you can do it just fine. And this makes me happy because uh, I, I deal a lot with nested data structures and it does get rather annoying when you have to go through all those intermediate values. If you use JSON a lot for like save data or something, you're probably jumping for joy right now. You can do this as many times as you want. Um, if instead of name containing a string, if it contained another data structure or an array or something, uh, I could give it, I could add on more accessors. If you're a fan of DS grids, you can add on more accessors and you can just keep going. You can chain these together as long as you want. Uh, now with that said, there's something to be said for after a certain point, of doing this, of doing too many of these, your code will become less readable than it was when it started. So I wouldn't go absolutely wild with this, but certainly for um, the the this, I'm sure this annoys me and nobody else. But the fact that there is a scroll bar at the bottom of the code window and it's almost, it's it's like almost, it's only scrolling a little bit that bothers me. And anytime it happens, I like to just expand the window a little bit so that it, um, so just so that the scroll bar goes away. What was I saying? Anyway, do keep in mind that um, readability is worth something. So if you have like, if you decide if you decide to design your inventory as var item pocket swords, and then instead of adding these the swords to just the inventory, you want to add them to the sword pocket, and then maybe you want to do that again for the pizza. So if you want to sort your items into categories, um, your inventory structure now looks like this, which is a slightly more elaborate tree. And now to traverse your inventory, you have to go do a little bit more work. And now it looks like this. Let me maximize this window just so that there's more space. Also for that matter, all the stuff on the side can go away too. This is where it starts to get a little bit messy. We are now three levels deep into the uh, into the the inventory data structure. Let me run the game so that you can see what that actually looks like on the screen. Okay, I wanted those to be vertically stacked instead of horizontally. I think I just ran the game in debug mode by accident. Oops, no help, go away. Okay, whatever. That's the debugger. I don't care. Okay, so we've now got our inventory categorized into pockets. I am going to close the debugger because that is kind of messy. Um, if you want to add some more stuff, what's a what's a what's a popular food item? Everyone likes bacon, right? Does anybody not like bacon? 
I actually don't like bacon as much as you might expect, which is a little weird. Let's give that a name. Let's carry around 25 of those, or 250. Uh, let's let's throw another item in there. Uh, instead of bacon, it can be... Does candy qualify as food? What am I talking about? Of course it does. All right, so we're gonna be adding some candy to our inventory. And instead of, instead of carrying around a measly 25 units of candy, we can make it like 650. Living the dream here. Anyway, I can run the game now, and our, our inventory now contains more items. This is good from a gameplay point of view, because it will, theoretically at least, uh, mean the player doesn't have to sort through a million things in one single list, but instead they can view their inventory by category. Programming-wise, it's a little messy, as you can see. We are three deep in chained accessors. Uh, as I think I started to say, and if I didn't start to say it earlier, I'm going to start to say it now. This is the point where I would personally break this up a little bit. Instead of, uh, instead of just having the inventory, instead of just accessing everything directly like this, rather, I would, uh, this is where I would start adding intermediate steps. This is just me, though. You don't have to do this. I'm just saying you should probably think about trying to make your code a little bit readable, or at, le at the very least, add comments. But that's neither here nor there. So this isn't necessarily limited to data structures. You can do it with other things. As I mentioned, arrays. I mentioned grids. You should be able to do it with functions. Uh, let me let me do a quick test. I remember certain aspects of this being broken, but let's see if it will let me do this. I'm just going to call that scripts because why would I ever give my resources a useful name? Oops. Uh, let us return an array. And I am not a very interesting person, so let's just return an array of four values, one, two, three, and four. To start with, let us draw text. Let's draw below the, uh, let's draw below the, the big inventory printout. 400, 160, and, um, what did I call it? God. Return array, okay. So that's going to draw the contents of the array on the screen, which it returns from the function 1, 2, 3, and 4. We can also loop through this. Or we should be able to anyway. Like I said, I remember certain specific aspects of this being broken. Okay, so let's loop through the array. Is there an error or is that just complaining? Okay, IntelliSense just takes a minute to update. So we're going to loop through the four values in the array returned from return underscore array. This is, by the way, not the way that you would want to do this. Uh, this is not generally considered safe programming because you don't know if the size of the array returned is necessarily going to change depending on how you generate it, but that's a story for another day. Um, I should be allowed to do this. And GameMaker is going to complain. Okay, hopefully in the future that will be changed. In other programming languages, if you return an array, uh, you can you can access them with the square brackets outside of the outside of the function parentheses like this, instead of having to go through a an intermediate step like that. Hopefully this will um, hopefully this will be fixed at some point in the future. Yeah, so that's another chained accessor thing. I I I live and breathe JavaScript, so. I am used to doing that. Some other, some of you might be horrified by watching me try to put square brackets outside of a right outside of a function call. Uh, that's up to you. Again, code organization. If you feel like structuring your your code like that, you're allowed to. If you don't want to structure your code like that, then uh, by all means, use the intermediate step. This is this is just a uh, this is just a convenience tool. You don't necessarily have to use it. Anyway, I've waffled on for long enough. Feel free to use this wherever you think it'll help. Uh, feel free to not use it wherever you think it would make a bigger mess than you started with. I can teach you, but I won't be held responsible for what you do with the knowledge. My name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games and stuff. I've got a Patreon thing going, so if you want to join the fun, links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post one or two of these videos a week. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Indie Punch and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to try and pronounce them out loud, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.